Welcome back to Let's Play Fragile Dreams. Where were we? Let's see here. Huh? Let's go. Uh, uh. Hmm. Uh huh. Jellyfish. Ah! Oh, come on. I should have hit more than that. Ah! Ah, yeah, that's more like it. Take this mystery item. Oh, oh, come on. Ow, 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 ow. It's my arm every time I have to freaking play this because of the freaking pointer. Walk on eggshells. What the fuck's that gotta do with anything we're doing? But we got Mr. Ham, so it's definitely ah! it is, at least. Ah, this is so soothing. And boring. Hmm, I see. Yellow bell latte. A lot, whatever. A tall human was watering the garden. His white shirt and black slacks were simple and clean. Teacher! Teacher! As the two young children called out, a man who was watering the grass raised his head. Yes? Anything the matter? The man they called Teacher kneeled down to peer at the young boy through his glasses. Teacher, when's Lot coming back? The question came from the little girl. Even from a distance, I could see the man's face grow dark. Teacher, will Lot ever come back? The little boy looked up expectantly, but their teacher could only furrow his eyebrows and purse his lips. More children gathered, questions alight on their small faces. Their matching white shirts were tattered with use. I could imagine that Lot, too, had joined this circle with her signature yellow bell. The young children didn't appear to have parents. They lived in the big, plain house with the man they called Teacher. Now, what's taking her so long? She's gone away before, but... The teacher murmured an excuse, but the children wouldn't be soothed. We want to play with Lot again. Uh, maybe Lot's sick. Maybe she's hurt. I bet she misses us. She must miss us. As worry spread among the children, the teacher asked them a question. Let me ask you. Does it make you sad to think that Lot's lonely? Of course. We miss her. The teacher nodded and continued. Then, if Lot knew how you missed her, it'd make her sad, right? His voice was gentle. As I watched from a distance, I hesitated momentarily. I knew that the yellow bell that Lot possessed was from this orphanage, which was why I'd come. But I couldn't imagine that she really had a family in this place. Would anyone care if she were gone? Their worries now put to rest. The children returned to their games, but one girl lingered behind. A freckled girl with curly hair. But we're all... The girl mumbled, looking down at her feet. We're all still sad, even if Lot isn't lonely. The teacher put his hand on top of the girl's head. I suppose there are some things that can't be helped. I know what you do at night. The girl blurted, looking at him hard. If you really felt it couldn't be helped, 
then you wouldn't be out searching for Lot every night after we've gone to sleep. Damn, I could have totally been a joke when he said, I know what you do at night. Right after that line, I just made a joke, but I wasn't thinking that really, because I just like, I'm pulled out of my mind here. Just uh, playing um, uh, Tales of Graces F, and it has quite a slow start to it, and I just like got kind of bored, and then it's like, uh. The teacher quickly put a finger to his lips. Only at the start of the game, though I'm sure it picks up on the plot and stuff later on, but it, it seems to have quite a slow start, and it's just like, it's kind of boring. Everyone's worried enough as it is. But now I'm more worried about you, teacher. The man simply nodded with a sad smile at the girl's words. I know that. And I'm sorry. Then, with the hose still in hand, he looked at the sky and spoke aloud. Between you and me, I'm not all that worried about Lot. I'm sure she'll still survive outside these walls. All that matters is that we all considered her family. I'm sure she wants to treasure those words, too. Because the family we made here is the only one we've ever had. As far as I'm concerned, we're Lot's family. And as long as she knows that, everything will be okay. And to be honest, I believe that Lot will return someday. Night came, and the lights in the orphanage winked out. I slowly crept out from the shadows that spread before the orphanage. The moment the teacher saw me, he stopped in his tracks. The light from the full moon completely transformed me. I rang the bell knowing it was all I could rely on. Lot? Is that you? Yes, yes. It's me, Lot. <sighs> so then, does this mean you're ready to come back to our home? But of course. If you'll have me, that is. Back at the orphanage. The freckled girl was trying her best to calm the children who were crying from the teacher's absence. For days now, she'd taken his place guarding them at night. Holding the young girl to him, the teacher announced my return to all the children. I am Lot. Lot with her yellow bell. A gentle member of this orphanage with a bigger family than anyone could ask for. That story was a little confusing there, to be honest. Just like, wait, what was going on in that story then? It's just like, what? Some of those can be confusing because they, like, some of them, like, from the perspective of animals, some from the perspective of a human, to the point where you just, like, makes it all unnecessarily confusing. We've been that way. Let's go this way. Doop -doop 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 I'll just... It's a golf club? Well, I've already got golf clubs. Let's go this way. Oh man, I'm really bored. I'm just like, really, really bored. I think we're gonna encounter some exploding crates here, aren't we? This one doesn't explode. Wait, there's actually a mystery item under that. Uh oh. If the ID cannot be confirmed, oh. it will be removed. If the ID cannot be confirmed, it will be removed. Horrible controls. Yeah. yeah. Da, da, da. Ignore the crates. Why even bother with them? They usually don't contain anything underneath them at all. 
There's another robot. There's another robot. I don't care about it. I'm the ID. Scroll on through over here because why not? And I'm gonna keep strolling forwards and the cutscene begins. Ugh, the security's been activated. It's locked tight. Well, only one way to go. Forward! Like we've been doing the whole time, sort of. Right. Well, technically, no. We've been going in various different directions. Turning around. Turning around. Turning around. Turning around. Another vibe, ladies. Probably the mystery items and all along our story. Yeah. I'm getting sleepy. <coughs> wow, Maybe. very cool. Orange Bell Biscuit, or whatever the fuck you pronounce it as. Another story! Everyone in town called the old writer who lived in this house a weirdo. The house was old fashioned, and the walls seemed weighted with history. So little care and upkeep had been done to the place. It wouldn't be a stretch to call it a dump. The front door was always open, and not because it wasn't locked, but because there was no lock at all. Some would think that an invitation to burglars, but the place was such a mess that you'd lose all interest in stealing the moment you stepped inside. The house reflected its owner, an oddball, aged and in disarray, and this day, that oddball writer was laying in the middle of his hallway. For a moment, I thought he was dead, but every once in a while, his finger would twitch, betraying signs of life. The bones in the back of his hands stood out, gnarled under paper-thin skin, but his slicked back hair looked young. The black framed glasses he habitually wore had stayed on, even after his fall. He'd probably worn those glasses so long that they were a part of his very being. And there he lay, weaving my way through the filth and the clothes and the furniture. I entered the house, and he didn't even notice. Bisk. Bisk. He called my name in a gravelly voice. With each call, my body would shiver with surprise, and the bell would ring. It was a refreshing sound. The old man must have heard it too. He immediately leapt off the floor and turned his back to me. Not another step. The man almost spat out. I don't want you coming near me. And with that, he went back to the mountain of papers that buried what might have once been a desk. His hand never stopped moving as he scratched at his head. I was thoroughly baffled. Whoops. Skipped a bit and of it. so I sat in the corner of the writer's room until night fell. The bell at my neck Read a continued faster. to tinkle lightly as I tilted my head. Can this man truly be Bisque's family? I came to check up on him every few days. But each time he'd act just as wild and nonsensical. When he wasn't throwing himself on the floor, he was completely immersed in his writing. Disturbed by his unnatural behavior, I tried my best not to allow my bell to ring, and so I stayed nestled in the corner until I finally heard the sound of a pen sliding across the desk. <sighs> a loud sigh was immediately followed by a loud thud. He'd fallen backwards off his chair. Idiot. Finally. Finished. The way he breathed those words sounded so unlike his usual crazed tone. I lifted my head, and the bell chimed to him gently, with his back still on the floor. He let out a low moan. Oh, Bisk. Bisk, my dear. I was sure he'd yell at me to stay away again today, but instead he just lifted his thin, ghost-like arm and gestured to me. Just as I neared him, with my careful, steady steps, 
he suddenly grabbed me by the scruff of my neck and dragged me down with him. At first, I went stiff with fear. But then, I heard the beating of his heart. He gently closed his eyes and petted me. Ah, Bisk, is that you? You've gotten so much thinner since I last saw you. His bony hands were rough, but he petted me softly. As I sat there, unable to answer, the beating of his heart became softer and softer. He continued to coo at me gently. <sighs> Finally, I'm able to sleep. His last words sounded more like he was speaking them from a dream. As the hand on me never wavered, I finally realized. My doubts were cleared. I understood now that this was the orange-belled Bisque's family. And as I gently closed my eyes, I could feel the sound of my own heartbeat slowly melting free of its ice. I am Bisque. Bisque with her orange bell. The foster child who brings peaceful slumber to the master writer, whom everyone called crazy. Uh huh, isn't that a nice little story? Yes. Let's continue with the plot already, man. I mean, some of these go on quite a long ass time. Oh, we are in this area now. He's like, oh my god, I can't get through. But it's so obvious what you gotta do. No boy. Well, looks like a dead end. Guess he means business. Guess it's pretty freaking obvious what we're supposed to do now. Huh? A dead end? <sighs> in other words, we're trapped in here. Bullshit. I guess this is the end. Bullshit. Huh? What's the matter? You're a guy, aren't you? It's too early to throw in the towel. Mm. <laughs> it's so oh, damn obvious. Know. What is it? Would you... Um... Well, would you like to hear my story? Uh, sure. Since you don't have a backstory yet. A long time ago. Long ago, there was a brilliant scientist who discovered, well, the secret of interaction. That is, how humans connect emotionally. The hidden ability to communicate without words. Way in the past, people could have connected with each other using that power. So a bunch of really smart scientists got together to study the idea. They thought if they could reawaken this power in everybody, we wouldn't have to use words to understand one another. They concluded that it'd make the world a better place. There were wars at that time. People argued and fought over little things and big things alike. Everything was a point of contention, and people grew tired of it. The whole world was unanimous in supporting the project. Using a machine they called Glass Cage, humans sent a signal around the world to try and trigger the latent empathy faculty in people's heads. This would enable everyone to naturally harmonize with one another. After that, what happened? Well, everybody was excited. Now that they could convey exactly what was in their hearts, all sorts of misunderstandings and ill will would vanish overnight. That's what they thought. The entire world was bubbling with hope. Everyone believed it was the dawn of a new era. Very quiet. They believed one, and right. believed and smiled themselves to sleep. Because then they wouldn't need to talk, and that would make it way but too then, quiet. The next morning, no one woke up. Yeah. They slept and stayed like that forever. And that's how it became. That's how they all died. Yep. 
There's your explanation for it. And you think it's happening again? Yeah. That girl? She's gonna be the catalyst for it. Catalyst? Her heart will make the connection. And connect with everybody else on Earth. If it succeeds. What if it doesn't work? I told you. It'll be worse this time. Not a single soul will escape. <laughs> and guess what? The first time around, I was the catalyst. Yep. Explains a lot, but really. Side. I don't get it. How did. How did like, you end up as the catalyst? How she freaking looks like that. Don't look at me. I have no idea. I lived a typical, ordinary life. And then one day, they forced me to take all these tests. Before I knew what was going on, they decided to use me. They plugged all these cords into my head, made me take strange medicines. It was all very weird. I'm telling you, in all my days, I'd never felt such intense pain. It happened every day. More experiments. They didn't care at all how I felt. But there was this guy. He had a heart. Sometimes he'd slip me chocolates and candy. He'd even stop by and ask me if I was doing okay. And also... He thanked me. Nicely. I see. So, you and that guy... Well... You were like friends. <laughs> you crack me up. I mean, I wouldn't exactly call Shin and I friends. If I had to label us, we were... A cat? Wait a minute. How'd that cat get in here? Cats the door's are everywhere. still locked shut. And the exit is blocked with rubble. I don't think so. Quick, after him! He might lead us to a way out! Duh! It's obvious. He didn't even check if there was a way out through the rubble. Follow the cat's cries to find the exit. You are fucking idiots. Look at this shit. Where is it? Where is it? There is a way through here and they didn't even bother to check. It's retarded. First thing you'd do is check, wouldn't you? But no, they're like, I'm not gonna check if there truly is a way out through the I rubble. Found it. The cat's meowing on the other side. If you crouch down, you should be able to fit. Fucking idiots. Here goes nothing. I was crouching just a second ago. Okay, still am. Nothing to say. He got through the rubble as well. You are my valued customer indeed. How the fuck's he get around, seriously? No need for services now. Well then, this is goodbye. For now. Well, I think after hearing all the whole backstory on things there, I think we should call it a part. So I'll see you next time, viewers. See you next time.